Hey, I'm Kev Kerr, Mr. Welcome back to MSGP Pro. Has Kev Ilman on the first moto in Sweden. That is looking to make it a double. We'll grab the overall and maybe even grab the championship lead as... Or oh, someone hit the sign on the inside as... Kelly Olsen gets the whole shot. Hillman getting past Sarah Goff, getting past Bogers as well. Live of portioning back. He's got Van Dotnik behind. And Hunter Lawrence. But it looks like Hillman up into ninth. As now we've got Vassen and the Italian battling for 10th. Is anyone really getting to know Lloyd? But let's get to know Bogers as well in front. So not as good a start as the first race. But for Hillman, once again, it's solid. He's into the top 10 immediately. Trying to make the move for 7th. Trying to make the move for 7th as well. Pass Hunter Lawrence. And down the inside of... Is that Jonas? Championship contenders battling for fifth. That was a good way of going down to neutral, wasn't it? But he's through into seventh. Trying to get sixth back from Lawrence. Looking down the outside of Jonas as well. He gets into fifth. Now he's got Siwoo in front. As Hunter Lawrence got past. Without him behind. And there he is. The Suzuki man. Here comes Jonas down the inside of both of them, though. Back into the top five. With the championship leader, then Hillman just immediately back on Jonas, forces him wide. Makes the move into fifth. That's coming to down from second, couple guys down. Uh, is it Prado leading? I see it's Olsen as well, so the Hasvana guys mess up at the end of the first lap. This is Prado, see what? Oh, Prado gets into the bank though. And Hillman are your top three. Then you've got Jonas and Hunter Lawrence behind. In fourth and fifth. Maybe as Siva with the not optimal line there. For the right hand. Here we're looking for the move. No room though. With all those banks there. Because you don't especially want to go on to those banks. And oh, Hillman down. Despite landing the jump. Obviously not to the agreement of the surface or his bike. So he's back down to sit behind the eye, but now we've got two Suzuki's in the podium place and Hillman down the inside of Jonas who's pushing him towards the sides. There's a battle over fourth behind onto Lawrence who's... He should not look back to the Australian. But Hillman back up to third immediately. Maintaining that confidence he had after the first race. Let's see it easily clears that tabletop. It looks like Jonas passed Hunter Lawrence 4 4. Oh, Lawrence fighting back immediately. Good fight from the Suzuki man. Liber there as well. As Hillman tries to catch back up to the top two after his mistake early in this race. On this lap. As that's another mistake using too much bank. He always wants to go up towards the bank, but you don't want to be doing that. It's all very close for the lead between Prado. And see where they're going side by side. Oh, and they both split the sizes. Got something into the side. And Hillman just goes through the parted sea and takes the lead. Now, is that the last of anyone will see him? No, see, we're batting back immediately. Just like in that first race, see, we're taking the lead in the early stages. Let's see how long he can hold on, though. This is the time. As you've got Fasten and Sterry battling for fourth. What? What is going on behind? Once again, a messed up order. Stay off the back of a top 10, remember, in that first race. So, Britt obviously loves it around here. And here's Kazaki. See, he almost not the only Kazaki doing well around it. So he's right in the back of Siwa. And to the outside. Can't switch it back though, Swiss Rider too wise. So go through to the left. So he gets a helping hand from Hillman. He has a much better run. And takes the lead. Crowd love that. Now let's see if Hillman can race away. Like he did in that first race. So go a bit more cautious into the double left. Oh, 
as oh hits the bank in the final corner but still sets a 39.5 and he can go quicker than that as once again it's another gloomy day isn't it in Sweden his main event race says oh Hillman down into what did someone leave the rubbish out on track what is that is that hay bill is that meant to be hay bill is that just a baby one is that going to be come fully grown who is it next year what what the hell Hillman still retains the lead shows the gap he's already built over the Suzuki man he's got a fish chasing back behind him using the bank a bit more on that left hander that's much better and much better into that left hander as well avoiding that little bump on the inside oh massively over the tabletop well condition is just a bit softer in this second race after you know the first race kind of mucking up the surface a bit being dry as well. Definitely feels like it as Libra and C were battling over second. Look at the Belgium coming to play again in the early stages. It's easy for him over that last section. As Libra takes back second from C were. Great battle between the veterans of this category. Well, I say veterans, I think Liber's been here less time than Siwa, but still for a few seasons. So we approach the end of this first third, and again, Hillman just exceeding expectations. Being in the lead. And looking incredibly comfortable, isn't it? That's to be one of his most successful weekends, right up there with Argentina early in the season. Just loving it around there, and at an important time in the season as well. What better comeback could he have had after the disappointment of Switzerland? Now you used performing it. And Jonas not performing as well. That is big news from the Latvian. Struggling to get top fives. And also seeing the struggles of the Hasvana twins, Olsen and Covington. Especially Olsen after how he performed in Switzerland. Looking extremely good. And Prado as well, just down the order, but I think we know for the Spaniard he will be just by himself in fifth for the rest of the season in the championship. So another 39 from Hillman. They're still battling like a hell over second. Looks like it's Library who's winning that battle at the moment. Wonder where Jonas is. Wonder where Prado is. He's crashed from third. So see we're back into that position by Liber. So that indicates Jonas was at least fifth in at that time. Before his teammate crashed again. It was Jonas in the first race, now it's Prado in this race. KTM's having trouble new stages of races here in Sweden. To try and look back, we can see Libra, we can see Siwa in sec in third, shall I say. They look like Jonas was in fourth, so interesting how that battle plays out. Because you know that KTM is probably the quickest bike in the field. Oh, there's Varna. Oh, and the car's like in Hillman's hands, of course. And the Suzuki's perhaps not the best. There's Liber down to third. So once again, it's exchanging phone numbers with Siwa. Hope they find a good restaurant afterwards. Talk about this battle. just in his element in the lead I 
was all a bit deep in that final corner, but still sets a new fastest out 39 3. Just getting into consistent 39 territory as well. And he says, does this race? That's even better than the first race, where he so often is better than the first race is Hillman in the second one. Unlike the last time out in Switzerland, that was a rarity, him being poor in the second race. There's Patriel right up there. The French one is Yamaha batting. So Jonas is at least fifth then. It could be worse. Which may be the title of this weekend, I guess, for him. Uh, so there is the Frenchman up into second ahead. The Belgium. That Yamaha performing very well around her. In his hands. I suppose that corner hasn't dried up. I would have thought it would have by now. Still some moisture there. There's a crowd that looks so excited on the right hand side in that section. Standing here for that little jump. Not even that happy when we go flying into the air towards Mars. It's a point in standing there, there. Stand somewhere else. Stand in the vape stand, maybe. Vape niche stand. So it was a bit wide in the first left. Used to bank well on the second note. Didn't clear the tabletop, that was pretty poor. But another 39 despite very up and down that there. And there is the vape nation stand on the right hand side. As I was still battling like a hell for seconds, along with Siwa and Patriel. Not what you expect to see behind, but fantastic to see three different manufacturers as well. Yamaha, Suzuki, and I believe I was on the KTM. And of course, we've got the Kawasaki in the lead. Never know, we could have a Hasvana in fifth. It could be five in a different manufacturer in the top four. We could have Bernardini on the TM in fifth. Never would out of the Italian, especially after his top 10 in the first race as well. Very good result. After a pretty tough season for him. Board that bike. Seemed to have performed better when him was last here, Bernardini. Battling for top fives, in the occasional podium or even a win. Now he's just slipped back slightly. Have TM in himself. To approach the halfway mark of this race. So we've got to think about so that heading into the final. Three rounds of the season, just six races remaining this season. It's been a long old season. Been very stretched out. Taking a long time to do, but Erwin Kazaki, everyone has got there. It's a 13 home one from him. What a beautiful rhythm is in it. He could be in a 38 soon. Ray's riding. Look at that, using the bank perfectly there. Crowd love that. Actually had some crowd noise for once. So I didn't clear the tabletop though. Nicely on the power out the left hander. There's a broach halfway mark for this race, so just six rounds remaining. That's 150 points on offer. So ideally Prado will be out. The run it. It's gonna be a four horse race between the Hasfarners, Hillman, and the KTM of Jonas. But who's going to be leading heading to the next round? I believe we've still got Assen in the Netherlands to go. And then we've got rounds in America, I believe. And it's always going to be incredibly tricky how to predict America. Assen, they're so sandy surface, but a very tight and tricky track. A bit like the Grand Prix, so shall we say, for motocross riders. 
Incredibly fast in sections. There we go. 38-3. He could be in the 37, Zillman. As you are into the second half of the race. So Assen could be a banana skin for Hillman. But he could be heading there with the championship lead. As Leibor out of second. Oh, the Belgium. Hung on for so long ahead of Patriel and Siwa. It's finally been better. Patriel's out from second. Now Siwa's in that position. Now no one wants second. As here comes Prado back. And his KTM. Where is Jonas? Again. Nowhere to be seen in this race. Seen his teammate a few times battling for the podium places. But no news on where Jonas is. Which would definitely mean Hillman would be leading, leaving here. I believe. Well, he's be right on the tail. Of the KTM. Now you've got to think that has Varnas as well. And they're not had the best weekend. They're going to be dropping back slightly. So with Hillman being very strong with Jonas. There he is. He is battling for the podium places with his teammate. Jonas losing a chunk of points, but not to Laz Varnas actually gaining points on them. At least on Olsen, Covington a bit further back has gained. It's about how much the American has gained and how well he's performing this race. I haven't seen him at all since the early stages. Same with Olsen. They're getting top 10s or even top 5s. Especially since the demise of the Frenchman and the Belgium. No battle for seconds. It could quickly become a two horse race between Hillman and Jonas then. As far as not done poorly, done poorly here, but then I expect them to be very strong around Assen, so they could be right back in it again for the final two races, or two rounds of the season, four races of the season. It's just going to ebb and flow like hell. These last few rounds. It is literally winners take all, really. Between the top four. We're just over a further race of this race remaining. This like Ioman is winning it all here in Sweden. Track being much nicer than it has been in, say, Russia or France or Switzerland, even though it looks as tough as those venues. That one's just been dialed in. Let's go for that final corner. Oh, almost a 37. New fast at 38 too. Definitely be lapping riders at this rate. He's slapping on average a second quicker than he did in the first race. Incredibly. You saw he won by just under 15 seconds. I shudder to think the gap to the riders by, especially when they crash like that. See, we're down again. Jonas promoted to second. Excellent for the lapping, but now he's down from second. So see we're back in that position on Izazuki. No one wants second place here. That's at least five riders now who've crashed out a second. Siwa. And the Suzuki. The KTMs of Prado. And Jonas. Libra on his KTM. Thatcher on his Yamaha. That's Varnas as well. Of Olsen and Covered, at least seven riders have crashed out a second in. Absolutely crazy what's happening behind. But for Hillman, it is just a Sunday ride. As they approach the final third of this race, just seven or eight laps remaining between him and another victory this season. Definitely has adapted back to MX2, hasn't he? He does another 38. 
despite a couple of mistakes that lap as well, including in this first chicane. Breaking a bit too deep. Very tricky to do. Is it kind of on a balancing act for that first chicane of being aggressive, but also just making it through the damn thing? Has Davy done it on that occasion? That's a bit wide for the left. Again, the middle third of the raceway has made no mistakes. As Jonas and Siwa back over second. KTM v Suzuki. This is normally where the KTM gets a bit stronger, where the Suzuki starts to tail off. I mean, he fought that in the first race and still Siwa got a podium. Definitely are enjoying MHGP Pro. We just get out of the championship hunt for a sec. I'm enjoying it now. The it just taking a roll, just to adapt to kind of a new physics riding style. The air physics are still not very good, as that's probably why I'm not using them a lot. I like, still thinking Monster Energy Supercross is very slightly better. Even though they should be slightly better in this game. This is what the game was marketed on. Of course, there were false lies from, from Milestone. I mean, it's slightly freer, no doubt. The air physics, but they're just still not up to scratch. It's another 38 for Millman. So they've got lots of work to do. I hope they have finally just given you more free movement. Monster Energy Supercross. I hope it's not just an iteration of Monster Energy Supercross. No, number one. I'm very much looking forward to Monster Energy Supercross as well. Really did like that game. Probably the one Monster game I've liked this season. Or this year, should I say. No, Gravel. I like the ideas. I like the thought of it. It just wasn't executed that well in my eyes. As Jonas down for third. Patrell back up there on his Yamaha. And then MotoGP 18, it is just their version of F1 2015. It's just the new engine. Stripped down is the game. With new physics. They're just not bothered to add anything else, it looks like. It's it's just a base game, basically. MotoGP Knighton should be much better with one year under the engine. Hopefully it's like F1 2016 was for Cody's. MotoGP 19 will be for Milestone. We have a clear indication of the direction they will go. This engine for the MotoGP games. It's another 38. And hopefully they do actually had back, say, the classic bikes, classic riders. That was superb. Hopefully have some classic tracks, not sold in as cheap DLC this time. Like they were for MotoGP, I think it was 15. And they sold like Donington in Estrell for like three quid, even though you could only use it in time troll. It was rubbish. I think they did that at Laguna as well. I think it was the season after the Laguna got dropped. That it is DLC for like three quid, even though again you could only reuse it in time troll. You might have used it in races as well, I can't remember now, but yeah, that was milestone being cheap and, and it's a bit like F1 2013 from Codemasters, but they actually put some foreign effort into those tracks rather than Milestone did. I think the Laguna they had they sold was just the Laguna from the previous year. Like nothing was done. They just decided to sell it as DLC instead of having it in the game. Well, this is what you find with licensed games sometimes. They've got to find ways of making money apart from just having the game. So they sell DLC, which is stuff which should just easily be in the game as normal and would have been in the game as normal like 10 years ago. Like you saw with F1 2018, selling that Braun and Williams. There's pre-order DLC and extra cars DLC, even though they could have easily had that in the game. Probably should have had it in the base game. They just had it as DLC. 
Same with the McLaren last year as well. That should have, could have easily been in the base game, but just stole it as pre-order DLC again. It's hard when you have a licensed game. Ways of squeezing money out of them. Especially with the model at the moment, it seems, in the game industry, having games as live services and having microtransactions and loot boxes and everything. Even though it looks like loot boxes are ending, thankfully. They've already been investigated, not just you know, in Belgium, of course, the band there, but in Sweden, in Britain as well, seeing the effect it has on younger people. And how younger people are gambling more, and loot box is definitely part of that. And of course, in America as well, they've been challenged, so... You know, it's like the next few years, loot box will be phrased out, but then they're just remarketed and packaged it as something else. Game industry will find ways of mate squeezing money out of us. As they normally do. Oh and also WRC7, I've got to mention. Said in the Porsche. As a DLC car or pre-order car, just like with Cody's, which Killington did. That rear engine to Porsche. Again, that could have just been a car that just had it in, but again. But it squeezed the money out, somehow. I'm surprised Milestone haven't done that with classic bikes for this. They actually had it in the two strokes. How lucky are we? As that was a bit poor from the pack marker. And no one just quickly dispatched us. I think that's the Frenchman. Oh, he did. And then he cut the bank and went wide. That's only his second mistake this race. So he gets near another rider, just goes tits up for him. It's not used to see another rider this race. Oh yeah, it's definitely something we're seeing in, say, Madden and FIFA, especially those EA titles with Ultimate Team, with 2K with their VC and their bollocks on progression and slowing it down so you have to buy VC. I mean, that's, a bit, that's been the case for as long as I've played the 2K games since 2K13, I think, was the first one I had. Oh, they're fantastic games, like, gameplay-wise, but just slowing down progression, so you have to buy VC. The story modes have been very up and down as well. And, of course, we saw that introduced in F1 2018, and that's in MLB The Show as well, and... Madden also has a long shot, which is actually pretty decent. Quite long shot might be cheesy, but it's quite decent and executed. It's like what the journey should have been for FIFA, except the journey's abysmal in FIFA. I I don't care at all about Alex Hunter. Why did you make the lead character so charmless and just give him everything on the plate? Even though he should be working hard, he got demoted to the championship in his first season just because, just because they didn't, he was just a young guy. He's like, yeah, you got to go down to the championship and he treats it like the worst thing in the world. Like, that's probably what happens to younger guys though. Even though he's starting for Chelsea at like 17, at least in my version of the game. Like, the guy who actually has to work for stuff in that game and actually... I care about is the guy he introduced as a prick at the beginning in the trials in the first journey he's the guy who actually works who actually has consequences as well if you fail to do stuff like in the FIFA 18 journey if you fail to do his chapter you can't play him again you have to restart you actually have to work with him instead of Alex Hunter where you just have everything on a plate oh no I've got to choose between World Madrid and Bayern Munich how poor for him he's got to choose between two of the best clubs in the world that's a bit ridiculous that game though of course it's probably not marketed to me it's probably marketed to you know the teenagers who are you're buying FIFA ultimate team points with their parents credit cards like I'm not I'm not doing that Never been the biggest fan of Ultimate Team. And I don't understand why that's the eSports route as well. I'd have loved to see like, pro clubs. 
You know, 11 on 11. That would have been the perfect eSport. Like how they have with 2K, with their 2K League, how they have its 5v5. Not even 2K are scummy enough to put their... My team thing, their version, the ultimate team, as their eSports. No, FIFA, let's put ultimate team front and centre on everything. I do feel sorry for the guys who actually like career mode in FIFA. I like career mode in FIFA, at least I did. It's the only reason I played those games. And now they're just so focused on Ultimate Team, it's just a derangement of ev everything else in that game. Let's see, we're down from second. Getting back to the race for a sec. Now of this rant on sports games, but... You're seeing the same with Madden. Love Madden. Oh, no, this is just good arcade fun. Not the best games ever made. Is Patrick down from third on his Yamaha? There's only been a fit in Jonas behind. And Prado. Oh, yeah, they're doing the same with Madden, even though, as I said, long shot's decent. Franchise mode? gone through like different iterations like five different iterations in the last 10 years they're just they're just trying to improve it little by little now but is it too little too late at least they're actually giving a thought to franchise mode and like FIFA with career mode to be fair to Madden but still it's just gone down the same path like ultimate team is just it's their esports as well even though they have it a bit different because they have where well, you can draft players and you can choose them but still ultimate team is the same for man and again I would love to see whole team play I remember that used to be a thing where you had three on three in Madden I love that even though I had one guy being a dick the whole time in the, in the match you could make up with the other fellow and actually win games that was that was pretty fun I think it was like five years ago I remember that on Madden 13 Playing that, that was great. And that was back when head to head was the main thing. Ultimate Team was just being introduced into Madden, but it's the only head of Patriot. That's important for the championship in the Battle for Third. Mega Battle for Third. But yeah, I absolutely loved playing head to head as well because I'm not the best at reading plays. I think I'm better now than I was back then, but. You know, I still love my American football despite all the things and changes and what's happening. Like this season's been one of the best seasons for a few years in the NFL. And that's even over the year the Pets won against the, against the Atlanta Falcons a couple of years back. There's always someone down in front. That's on to the final lap. And you see Hillman's dipped into the 39s and 40s while I've been ranting about sports games, but yeah, it's just a shame what Madden's become. Apparently they keep making gameplay, needless gameplay changes as well to Madden and just making the gameplay worse. More arcade -y, even though people want more realistic gameplay. They are trying to add realistic, say, animations, but yeah, apparently the gameplay with Madden 19 is a bit awful. So I'm going to touch that when it comes on to EA Access next year, but... Not for the time being. I'd often have a Super Bowl edition, which is like 20 quid. I might get that again, like I do a couple of years ago. Let's all see we're down for second on his Suzuki. Seriously, does no one want to finish second this race? Oh, so Hilmer's only had two crashes. I think everyone behind in the top five has had more than him. Which is, I think it's the first time we can say that this season. What a crazy race behind. But yeah, it's a shame how sports games go on. At least we've got... Some good, like, racing sims. Say so Automobilista. Who's decent. Again, they've sold DLC. I can understand them being a small company as the Italian ends with a bang. And so does Hillman.
perfect couple of races. So Hillman wins by over a minute. That must be the biggest win margin this season so far ahead of Siwa. Clings on to second after 21. That's we under that further. In the first race as well with Jonas in for grabbing a vital podium for the champ. Winning that battle ahead of Patriel with Prado in fifth. Covington recovers the sip. The American on the Kawasaki in seventh. Ahead of Ondal. Nick Pratchel for the top ten on the Kawasaki. Ahead of Leiber. Lawrence and Evan Olsen down in 12th. Then Watson, Sterry, then Ardini, and then everyone else is a lap down from the Italian down to Zagoffa. As Prado today rode well and took his Grand Prix, there's nothing else to say. We like you, Prado. Yeah, one of us win higher, so you're quick. We get it. We get it well done. I'll oh, get out of here, Italian. So, Hillman, a perfect weekend in Sweden. Two victories, 50 points. The overall victory by eight points. Head of Siwa, what a weekend for the Swiss rider. Then Patchell, Jonas in four, 15 points have been lost to Hillman. So he won't lose the championship lead, but that gap will be, I think, around half to the Macau rider. Then we've got coming to round out the top five. Then Leiber, Prado, Van Dotnik. Olsen was the guy who had the off weekend. 30 points lost to Hillman, 15 to Jonas. He's not looking good for the Dane in the championship with Sterry ran out the top 10 after a great first race, especially for the Brit. Bogus, Lawrence. And then right at the back is Zagoff, the only guy who didn't really get a substantial result this weekend. As in the championship, it is Hillman back up to second, but 17 points behind. Jonas, that gap has definitely been closed up. I think it's the closest it's been all year long. And then we've got Covington in third, a further seven, 20 points back, should I say. And he's 37 points behind Jonas. It, depending on how Assen goes, it could become a two-horse race. We have Olsen down to fourth now, 45 points back. What a time to have your worst weekend of the season. We've got Prada around and out. The top five definitely out of it, but and a bit lonely as well as the Spaniard, as he is 89 points ahead of Patriel, who's 43 ahead of Siwa, as they're comfortably clear of Leiber, Lawrence and Bogues, who rounds out the top 10. As scrolling further down, we've got Sue still ran out the top 20, but there's Petrov up to 22nd of the Russian. And as you can see, we've got the South African right at the back. So, decent amount of credits earned. Actually achieved a sponsor objective as well, or tech technical sponsor objective. As unfortunately we didn't get the whole shot, so we weren't able to get that other technical objective. But we, we can still go for it next time out. Oh, it's actually America next now. The WW Motocross Park. Look at, that, look at the track layout for that one. Looks like a Tilka Dome. But as I was saying about Automobilista as well, just to round up on that point. Yes, we paid for the DLC for that game, but again, they're small bazillion developer. We're kind of buying the DLC funding that as well. You don't really get that kind of feeling or effect, say, buying DLC from big AAA companies like you do from a small indie developer like that. You are developing games for a very niche market as well, but they've got fantastic games. They also announced a new car recently as well for Automobilista, so I can't wait to try that out, you might see open Automobilista soon, but you'll definitely see the round in America next time in MHGP Pro. Can Hillman close the gap to Jonas or will the Latvian extend it again? Southwatch and we'll find out next time.